Hey guys, what's up? So today we're getting back into Peaky Blinders. Um, so the first episode, we had learned that the Peaky Blinders is um, a gang, a street gang. Um, and I had looked it up. I guess it's based on like true events, but uh, I, yeah, I didn't know that. I thought the Peaky Blinders was, um, you know, just a made up story. But no, it's based on true events. I thought that was really cool. Um, I'm pretty sure, like, some of it's fiction. I don't know how much, but um, usually, you know, they do that with, like, TV shows like this. But, um, and I have, like, notes here, um, so I don't forget. So, the Peaky Blinders is, I think it, I don't know if it's all family members or... I think it's like all fam fa family members, sorry. <laughs> um, but you have the leader, uh, Arthur Shelby. Um, he's the big brother. And then Tommy. Um, Tommy, okay, Tommy acts more like the leader than Arthur does, to be honest. Um, but he's younger than Arthur, and he's our main character. Um, and then I looked up the other names because I forgot. Um, but there's John, there's Ada, and Finn. Um, and then you got Aunt Polly and Uncle Charlie. Um, Uncle Charlie was like, I'm pretty sure the guy. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the guy at the um, at the docks. Because uh, Tommy had, they didn't just, you know, like steal guns on purpose, but... They had, I think he said they, he asked his men to get some, like, what was it, motorcycle, bike, it was like, I don't know, like, I don't know, it was like vehicle parts or something like that, um, it was like some kind of parts, like machine parts, I don't know, shipping got mixed up, and what actually came instead was a whole bunch of, like, weapons and ammunition, and Tommy was supposed to tell his uncle to give it back so you know they wouldn't get in trouble because cops were looking for it and he told his um his aunt polly that he was gonna do the right thing um but at the end of the episode um tommy had changed his mind so he kept the guns um and his uncle told him like you're fucking crazy like what are you doing but i don't know i guess tommy has like a plan um so yeah, there's cops looking for the guns, and I think that there's like an undercover cop. Um, she had gotten a job at like the bar they go to, um, so she's watching them. And oh yeah, that's right with Danny. Uh, so I guess a whole bunch of men came back from uh, the war. Tommy and his brother, I think Arthur. I think yeah. They, they all came back from the war, and Tommy's friend, um, Danny, he was pretty jacked up. I mean, they're all jacked up, you know, uh, PTSD doesn't just pick and choose, it happens to everyone, but, um, but Danny was really jacked up, and he had accidentally killed this guy. His men were gonna, you know, get justice and go after, go after him and kill him, but, Tommy had worked out an agreement that if he kills Danny with uh, witnesses watching, then it's all good. So Danny had, I mean, Tommy had faked Danny's death and Tommy sent him somewhere and he's part of the Peaky Blinders now. But uh, I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, so yeah, guys, I'm ready to get right into this episode. Um, Thank you so much for watching, and full uncut version will be on my Patreon. Thanks. I reckon it's communists he's after. So this cop is going to leave us Okay, it's a recap. Is this little boy? That was like watching. I don't know who he's watching. Is it like a cow or something? Homie! Johnny Dogs. <laughs> Homie, how the hell are you? All the better for getting the city smoke out of me lungs. Yeah, that was a little boy. Why are they making him look all sexy and stuff? 
Don't like that. So you're first fire since France? What do you know about France? You Warshaw gypsy bastard. So this is the horse. And that's the car. I like the music in the show. Bloody horse. Of course we're not swapping it. Huh? That'd be mad. Hey. Yeah. Oh. I knew it. You knew it. Tell me, you bloody idiot. Shut up, Arthur. <laughs> I won. Oh. I promised Johnny I'd let him have a spin in the car if he lost. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh. Are you league boys laughing at my brother? <laughs> come here. I asked you come a on. question. Come here, come on. It's just a crack. Get your family out of here. Go and enjoy yourselves at the fair before they start a war. Well, that's your rumor. Yeah, but his mom was a diddy koi whore. Oh. Why would you say that? That's why they- okay. That's why they have that on their hats. I was wondering. Well, they asked for that. We will leave no stone unturned. Every gun, every bullet will be brought to me for inspection. Now, wow. take your possessions. I didn't mean take your possessions. Or, positions. I thought he was saying possessions. It's like, they don't have anything. Oh, shit. Oh, your brothers are at the fair. If it was them, they wouldn't knock. Oh. Okay, yeah. That sounds about right. Come on, Aita. If the cops find me, we're screwed. Fuck. Aita. Dang, ripping off the pictures. I'll catch you. You gotta go. Girl, that was a fucking mattress. You're fine. Look at this. A prescription for iron tablets for Ida fucking Shelby. Mmm. Mrs. Donovan! I need that favor. Come in and be quick. I'm not coming in. She is. Holy Jesus, it's the Shelby girl. Hey, you've not seen her <laughs> with me, okay, Mrs. Donovan? Just give her a cup of tea and let her stay until the police are gone. She's the sister of those Peaky Blinder devils. And yet, she's an angel. Come on, Ida. <laughs> what are you gonna do, Freddy? Me? Hey, I'm gonna have to leave town for a bit. Gentleman would take off his hat, put out his who, pipe. Who is it? Tommy? Oh. Yeah, right there. Really? You've heard of me. <laughs> I've heard of you. First, I thought he was said, or that he said, "Are you afraid of me?" I, like, I think she's afraid of you. Really? Something precious, something stolen. Perhaps you know what I'm talking about. Sir. Oh, sorry. Misunderstood your intention when you pushed me against the wall. <laughs> okay, we're doing this in a church. Look, I'm not like super religious or nothing, but damn. Arthur Shelby said you people would help us. We don't know what you've lost. How can we help you find it? But I have found <clears> it subsequently that I was speaking to the wrong man. And when I say the boss, I mean Thomas. <laughs> yeah, I knew that's what he meant. Like I said, Arthur doesn't seem like he's much of, like, the actual leader. He is, but... Now what the bloody hell's been going on here? <laughs> Jesus Christ. They said the Peaky Blinders had cleared out to the fair to let them do it. No, I never said nothing to that copper about smashing up bloody asses. All right, which pose do they do? The guns, the chain, the Marquis, all the ones that pay you to protect them. So go on, drink your beers, get out. You better show people you're still the cocks of the walk. And I'll some mm. cash to the landlords of the pubs. Pay some veterans to fix the places up. So we both know what they were looking for.
to let me tell you the odds. I reckon it's three to one there'll be a revolution. I wouldn't bet on that. That cop is betting on it. <laughs> He's not going to let it rest till he gets those guns back. Mm-mm. Did he talk to you, Paul? In the church? Did he try to find our Ada? She was sleeping. <sighs> Where was she sleeping, Paul? Thought you didn't care for women's business. <laughs> he knows you're the boss. He wants to meet you. Will you talk to him? Yeah. We'll strike a blow back first. Is he... Does he know what he's getting himself into? Not only him, but he's... Dangering like so many other people. Come the wrong boys. <laughs> I'm a reporter. I had a phone call. Someone called Thomas Shelby. Come with me. You're Mr. Shelby. All the way back, please. I am. You said I would be protected. You're protected. There are some things I want you to write down. It's not the people around here that is loyal to the king. It's the officers. These new coppers over from Belfast, breaking into our homes and interfering with our women. We don't think our king would want to see that happening. So we are lighting fires to raise the alarm. May I ask you, in what capacity do you speak? No capacity. I'm an ordinary man. Hmm. I really hope no one hurts him. For doing that. Yes, sir. Inspector Campbell, I hear there's been a bonfire in your city. Certainly nothing to trouble you about, sir. Ah, but I'm afraid it has troubled me. Half an hour ago, I received a wire communication from the editor of the Birmingham Evening Dispatch. It seems one of his reporters was invited to the fire and discovered that they were burning pictures of the king. Of the king? Yes. Mm -hmm. I will go down there immediately and... Uh... Arrest those involved. No, you most certainly will not make arrests. <laughs> if there are arrests, there will be trials. If there are trials, there will be more newspaper reports, which will necessarily mention the burning of the king's likeness. Oh. Are you any nearer to finding those stolen guns? We are making steady progress. We need results. Good night, Mr. Campbell. Where have you been all day? In bed. Then I couldn't wake up. Then I was cold, and then I had to go for a wee. Then I was okay. with this bear on a boat. That was just a dream. I've never seen you read the paper. I've never seen you light fires with them. The BSA are on strike. You just put it on one spot? I... Okay. What? Stand up. What, is she pregnant? Hi, what are you doing? Ada, how late are you? Five weeks. Five. Seven if you count weekends. I think it's a lack of iron. Okay. You know she already knows. Come on. Oh. She had to get the pussy. Puts. Procedure done. Whose is it? If I tell you, you'll tell them and they'll cut him to pieces. Not if he marries you, they won't. I don't know. I don't know where he is. Jesus Christ, Ada. Look, he's gone away, but he said he'd come back. Yeah, but they all say they'll come back. He's not like <laughs> that. He's a good man in promise. He will come back up, Paul. I know he will. You sure? Because last episode, you, like, said that you loved him, or, like, I don't know, like, she goes, like, what did she say? Five beasts, I don't know what I'm talking Thomas. about. What? You love me more than you love him, right? And he didn't answer. I think that's what she said.
Oh. Just pass the guitar on. Got a bullet with their name on it. The guns are now this. Tommy. The guns are not spoken of. Why did you keep them though? It's Thomas Shelby against the old bloody world, right? <laughs> Is he talking to anyone about his plans? I mean, anyone. I, I'm so sorry, Mr. Shelby. Yeah, she stopped him on purpose. I'm Grace, by the way. I know who you are. What's his name? He was another name. Was that the same horse in the first episode? I thought she like said. I thought he said his name. Was it Monin Boy or something like that? I can't believe I remember that. that. Wasn't allowed. I'd like there to be one night a week when they're singing. I think it would be good for everyone. Maybe it's a different horse. Just stuck up on the horse. Harry was too afraid to ask you. So. But you're not. I am. You sound like one of those rich girls who comes over from Dublin for the races. Do you like horses? How's your fancy earning some extra money? Doing what? <sighs> Dig out a nice dress. I want to take you to the races. Hmm. Stuff. Tommy, they're all here for Monaghan, boy. That's what I like to hear, Johnny boy. <laughs> and Ampo wants to see you. Okay, so are they, like, selling their horses? Because that was the horse's name, right? Ah. Uh, is that where he's going? There's, did she tell him about their relationship? Tell me the man's name, Ada. Rudolph Valentino. Ah, uh, okay. Get out! All of you! So tell me his fucking name. Dang, he stopped the whole fucking movie. <laughs> Freddy fucking Thorn. Your best mates in school, the man who saved your life in France. So go on, go on, cut him. Cut him up and chuck him in the cut. I'm a Shelby too, you know. Put my fucking film back on. <laughs> oh. At least he actually did it. <laughs> hmm. So Monaghan boy finally lost. Bit of time unlucky. We took money from all over the city. Yeah, but you'll pay it back to people around here. Hmm. Buy your popularity back. Already done. And you fix this race without the permission of Billy Kimber? <laughs> Obviously didn't teach you well enough. Rule one, you don't punch above your weight. Billy Kimber is there for the taking. Says who? Says Tommy in his parliament of one. I ran this business for five years. Yeah, well, I was away fighting, remember? You strike when your enemy is weak. That's for war. Polly, it's about Ada. I need to know. Ada wants you to give Freddie this letter. She wants Freddie to know she's having his baby. Deserves an opportunity to do the right thing. So she is pregnant. What do you think Freddy sees in our Ada? It's Freddy's business. No. No, I'll tell you what he sees. He sees machine guns and rifles. What is it you really don't like about Freddy? She'll have no life for the man on the run. Tell Ada Freddy went to America. Oh, Russia. Believe me. I know. I was 16, and I didn't dare tell anyone. In the end, I did it myself. I did it to myself, and he didn't come back. They don't. Why should they? You know the words. You're a whore. 
but there's no word for the man who doesn't come back. Yeah, it's always been that way. I mean, now there's a deadbeat, but they're so common. It's no one really cares. Damn. I chose this place because it was outside both of our jurisdictions. I don't think he fucking cares. He didn't even want to talk to you. Inspector, I responded to your invitation because I want us to understand each other. I'm a businessman. And I want my city run peacefully. Well, if the city is peaceful, business can thrive. So we were on the same side. I think perhaps we could be. My men found this in the bedroom of a mm. known communist. It has your sister's name on it. It was obvious she'd been sleeping in us bed. I've already dealt with the situation. Have you? No, you haven't. You and your specials will leave my businesses alone from now on. No more raids into our territory. No more smashing up pubs. You will turn a blind eye to all of my gambling operations. Also, I intend to do business with Billy Kimber. He runs most of the legal trackside betting outside of London. I want you to put in a word with the Chief Inspector of Gloucestershire that his men should leave me alone when I make my move. Forgive me, I don't seem to have a pen to write down this rather long list of demands. And what do I get in return? You always carry around a pen. I have what you're looking for. I have the guns. What guns? I know it's play games. So wait, wait. <laughs> 25 loose machine guns, 50 carbines, 10,000 rounds of ammunition, all in a crate bound for Libya. Mm-hmm. I have left word with men I trust that if I am taken into police custody for whatever reason, those guns will be shipped to Liverpool. From there, they will be sent directly to Belfast and sold to the Irish Republican Army. I like this view. It was a good shot. I'm a fair man. It's a fair offer. I need an answer. Right now. Just give him a minute. He'll agree to it. Very well. But I'd prefer if we don't shake hands on it. <laughs> His pride. <laughs> Thomas Shelby is now the beginning, the middle and the end of your mission. You must do everything you can to get close to him. And yeah, see. Find out where those guns are heading. And they're gonna end up falling in love. Underestimate me in every way. You are now active on a military operation on behalf of the Crown. And I wish to God circumstance hadn't chosen you. What's happening? Oh shit, is he like sick? You, you brought with the fair and bad feeling. The leaves put a bad seed in the hoof and got an old woman to put a spell. <laughs> so those leaf bastards cursed him. Oh shit. It's going to his heart by tomorrow, I say. Seen curses like this twice. Can't take them back, Tom. No. Get up. Shit. Oh. oh. Okay. Thank God they didn't show that. What is that? Him? Tommy? Just give me a drink. Rosary. He took the night off. 
How's your beautiful horse? Dead. I just put a bullet in his head. Mm-hmm. He looked at me the wrong way. Mm. It's not a good idea to look at Tommy Shelby the wrong way. You know, in France, I got used to seeing men die. Never got used to seeing horses die. Well, yeah, animals are better than people. Everyone knows that. Cheltenham's grand affair, is it not? The king will be there. King George? Nope. King Billy Kimber. Hmm. <laughs> what must I do? The two pounds, you'll do what I ask you to do. I want three. If I am meeting a king, I won't be wearing a cheap dress. Hmm. There you go. And I ask you to let me sing. It's part of the deal now, too. Since when? Since right now. Everyone gets to sing their song just like we did in Dublin. You never worked in Dublin. So don't lie to me. I asked around about that pub you said you used to work in. No one has heard of you. Why'd you ask around? You had a girl from a good family who got herself pregnant. It's not something I want known. Damn, that's why he was so... Well, one reason why he was so upset about the whole Ada thing. You won't tell anyone my secret. Do you think I'll tell people things? <laughs> you don't tell no one nothing. So what do you sing? Anything you want. Happy or sad? Sad. Sad. Mm-hmm. It's a sad day. I'll break your heart. Already broken. Many an hour, sweet happiness from my friends and relations. Is he sleeping? <laughs> he was sleeping. Ah. Uh -uh. Over there, they're going to be empty. But we... Jesus. Oh. Freddy. You came back? Freddy, Tommy will kill you. It's Tommy who tipped me off. Maybe he's got half a heart after all. Said get out of town. Take her with you. Damn, she's leaving then? Ada Shelby. Will you marry me? Yes. He better not die. Is he gonna die? Right. Get on this bloody train and get out of here. Come on, both of you. Freddy, come on! We're not going anywhere, Aiden. I'm not afraid that... of Tommy Shelby. Is that a good idea? I don't know if it's... <laughs> She's like... The drama. It's brewing. Holy shit. Oh wait, is it the it's king? Billy Kimber. Yeah. I was thinking that, but... So I remember him saying something about it. Is there any man here named Shelby? Another bad haircut. How to get these men a drink? Everyone else go home! <laughs> that dude got up quick. He's like, yes please. Don't have to tell me twice. <laughs> You go on. But Mr. Fenton said, said go, go home. Oh. Well, I never heard of you. And then I did hear of you, some little Diddy Kai Razor gang. I thought to myself, so what? But then you fucked me over. So now you have my undivided attention. By the way, which one am I talking to? Who's the boss? Tommy. Well, I'm the oldest. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Are you laughing at my brother? Okay, we're not doing this again. He's a fucking king. Stop it. Told the boss he's called Tommy, and I'm guessing that's you. Because you're looking me up and down like I'm a fucking tart. <laughs> there were suspicious betting patterns like in Kenton Park, a horse called Monaghan Boy. Hey! That's King Alfred! 
Which one of you is the boss? I'm Mr. Kimmer's advisor and accountant. And I'm the fucking boss, OK? Right, end of parlay. You fixed the race without my permission. You fucking gypsy scum. They're going to have to deal with him talking crap to them like that. <laughs> they can't do nothing about it now. It's from the Lee family. You were also at war with the Lees, Mr. Kimber, am I right? The Lees are attacking your bookies and taking your money. Your men can't control them. Right, the Lees are doing a lot of talking at the fairs. They have a lot of kin. They are saying the racetracks are easy meets because the police are busy with strikes. Now, we have connections. We know how they operate. Together we can beat them, divided, maybe not. I admire you, Mr. Kimber. You started with nothing and built a legitimate business. It would be an honor to work with you, Mr. Kimber. Nobody works with me. People work for me. Yeah. I knew he's going to say that. Pick it up, Pikey. We're going to have to deal with the disrespect for now. She had picked a fight with the Lees on purpose. Tommy, we can't mess with Billy fucking Kimber. Get yourself a decent haircut, man. We're going to the races. <laughs> Well, so the first thing I will say is I like how this episode started from how it ended. At first, they weren't taking any shit <laughs> from anyone that said anything. And then when the episode ended, they, I mean, they didn't really have a choice. It was the king that was, you know, disrespecting them. So they couldn't do anything. Um, looking on my notes here, uh, I am very surprised that... Um, Tommy actually made a deal with the cop. Like, I thought that would have, if that happened, I thought that would have happened, like, you know, down the line. I honestly didn't even think they were going to make a deal. I honestly thought they were just going to be fighting the entire season. But, um, they came to a, an agreement on the second episode, which is like, you know, in my eyes, I... That seems quick. I am very curious on, you know, the full story of what happened with Tommy and uh, Freddie. I'm very curious on what happened with them. Obviously, Freddie had to have done something, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, because if Freddie went to the war with them, which. I'm assuming he did. I don't know for sure, but if Freddy went to the war with them, maybe he did something at the war. I don't know. I was thinking maybe it had to do with that nightmare that uh, Tommy keeps having. Uh, from the nightmare, it wasn't fully clear on what was going on. Uh, the only people that looked familiar in that nightmare was Tommy, obviously, and Danny. I don't know. I don't really remember anyone else. Freddy seems very sure that he can get that friendship back with Tommy, so. But, uh, yeah, guys, I'm excited to, um, to get into the next episode. Things are heating up. Um, so, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching, and let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.